So I'm still Ron Evans, dead programmer on Twitter. I still work at the hybrid group. <laughs> despite, the, despite the job offers that are flying fast and furious. Wait, you don't work at Living Social yet? <laughs> <laughs> don't go there. Anyway, so some of you know that, uh, in fact, some of you were actually at RubyConf in Denver. Who was here besides them and him and hybrids? Yeah, all right. None of the rest of you? Come on, Denver's not that far, and RubyConf is awesome. It's All right. the same time as Farmhouse Conf. We had people there, too. <laughs> and I wasn't one of them. I I'm so sad. Do you send your operatives to every... Yes, to everything, everywhere. And the reason is, is I have a lot of operatives. And those operatives, some of them are very, very young. That's right. So we are some of the creators of Kids Ruby, which is a version of Kids Ruby, or excuse me, a version of Ruby designed for kids. So check it out at kidsruby.com. And so we created a thing called Kids Code Camp, which is an all-day free open source programming camp for kids to learn how to be developers because you can never start them young enough. So uh, some of you guys know about this already. It's a very cool thing. Anyway, uh, so this is an actual picture from our Kids Code Camp in Denver that was really, really fun. We had over 65 kids registered, mentors, just food, craziness. It was amazing, right? So robots are awesome, right? Who here likes robots? Yeah, if you, just everybody, right? <laughs> right? And kids love robots, right? Kids really, really love robots. So kids Ruby plus robots, yes, <laughs> right? I mean, the Sphero. Who's heard of the Sphero? Yeah, the Sphero is a very small little Bluetooth controlled robotic device which is created by Opteryx, which is located in Boulder, Colorado. And they were kind enough to roll out to our Kids Code Camp with 40 of these for the kids to use. What could go wrong? Kids programming robots, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we basically uh, flew in to uh, Denver and decided that we were going to make this happen. So we modified Kids Ruby with the help of uh, Tender Love, Aaron Patterson, uh, Y Cats, Yehu the Cats, uh, M Seiko, uh, who is one of the members of the Ruby Core team from Japan, Jim Wyrick uh, of New Context fame, and Hong, who's uh, very quietly in the back of the room, kind of mellow. No, he's our Yehuda. Anyway, so we got together and we said, let's make this happen. Kids Ruby robot compatible. Yes. So let's see if this actually works. So I'm going to wake up Sphero. So we wrote, we took the Sphero gem, which Aaron had written for an AT&T hackathon, and then we made it actually work. <laughs> <laughs> I asked him, Aaron, you took their money for that? He's like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, luckily, he was there to do all the real work. Anyway, so we're going to wake up the Sphero. Let's see if this works. I have no idea if it's going to work or not. So we shake it, and that says it's now ready for Bluetooth bonding. It's paired. So I'm going to put the table between me and it, just in case. All right, so we'll put it down on the floor here. And so every Sphero has a unique identifying uh, device ID, which is this three-letter digit ID, which interestingly enough, if you see the colors that it's flashing, it's actually telling us that the uh, middle color is green. Right? I know, it's really hard to tell. We spent like a while trying to figure out the three flashing colors means this code, and then we would look at the Bluetooth, and it's like, oh, yeah, we were wrong. So, right, exactly, yeah, exactly, but only three instead of the other codes. All right, so we modified the uh, Sphero gem so that the first thing it does is it starts, which connects via Bluetooth and the Ruby serial gem, which was really the source of all of our consternation. And then we're going to tell it to do two things. First, we're going to say, roll forward at a speed of 60, and this sleep three. It would be better to say that keep doing it for three seconds as opposed to sleep, because that confused the kids, but they figured it out really fast. It meant just don't send any more commands to Sphero. So we're basically, if this works correctly, we're going to go forward, backward, and then stop. So let's find out what happens. This should be interesting. If I can click on the button. Let's see. Oh, there's Sphero. Hopefully this will work. I didn't have a chance to test it before I got here. We shall see. Is it paired? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Just run <a> test. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Six 
<laughs> Giles is, a MacBook is here, however. Oh, there's Sphero. PGB, huh? What? Don't do that. Don't do anything on my MacBook. I think that's the wrong one. You need to add device on the Bluetooth one? No, it's PGB. Okay. All right, let's try it again. It is paired, however, it's already paired. It should be paired, but not uh, connected. Let's find that out. Yeah, but if it's, uh, it pairs, but not connect. That's, uh, let's find out, though. It's already paired. It got mad after the stuff we did to it before. <laughs> Up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you, Sphero. Sphero, everybody, give it up for Sphero. All right, so let's make it do something a little tiny bit more interesting. Let's open up our Mars mission. Let's just go for it. All right, so we got the kids really excited. Because, you know, obviously, coming from Southern California, we really love robots, ideally ones that are on other planets. And we, they said, oh, well, what if it goes off in the corner and we have to put it back? I'm like, you can't go do that. There's no astronauts up there yet. How are you going to do that? They're like, oh, wow, we don't know. Like, you've got to send it Ruby commands. All right, so they, they kind of dwell, dwelled on that for a minute. So we also modified the uh, Sphero so that we could turn its colors to uh, the, control it by sending different colors. We said, your mission is navigate across the Martian surface to four different coordinates and then change the colors of the Sphero in order to send back a message to JPL here on Earth. They're like, JPL, that's in Southern California. Don't worry about it. <laughs> All right, so let's see if we can get this one to work. It should be interesting. Oh, I did. Hello. Oh, these. Oh, the buttons. The buttons. There we go. All right. So let's see if Sphero will do a mission to Mars. Like all Martian communication, there's a little slow latency due to the speed of light. All right. Go, Sphero! Oh. Change colors. <laughs> it's waiting for 10 seconds. Then it should hopefully move to a new location. Yeah, All right, well, it's a small. Uh, small I changed the setting so it wouldn't you know, take up too much space. Because <laughs> I didn't know how much room we actually would have. But actually, we had more than we expected. It's looking for you, Giles. <laughs> it's coming for you. <laughs> Notice I am not commanding it right now, OK? The software is doing it on its own. All right, and, uh, and that's it. So, Sphero. Yes, what could go wrong? Exactly. So, GhostSphero.com, you can actually buy these from them. We don't make the hardware. But Kids Ruby is completely Sphero compatible now out of the box. And if you'd like to help us at uh, GitHub.com slash hybrid group slash Sphero is our fork. We'd like to add some additional functionality. So buy a Sphero and uh, help us make it really awesome for Kids Ruby. Thank you.